Hey everybody, it's Sean Powers, and we are getting back to the Linux Plus course. I know it's been a while, lots of crazy things have been going on in my life, but nevertheless, today we are starting section three, which actually includes all sorts of stuff that I cover in my Bash cor course up there. So I'm going to put a link up there. I'll also put a link in the description. I have an entire playlist, a bash scripting playlist that covers much more even than is listed here. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is use some of the footage from that course when I'm explaining some of these concepts. Not because I'm lazy, well, no, it's probably because I'm lazy. I just, I'm really happy with that course and I think I explained it pretty well there. So I'm just gonna use past Sean to explain some of the things that we're covering for Linux Plus. And again, if I ever go too quickly and you like didn't quite catch it, be sure to look at that entire Bash playlist. It's all free, it's all on YouTube. And it goes really in depth on how to Bash script with all sorts of nuances and stuff like that. But what we're gonna cover in this video are how variables uh, work really quickly. We're going to cover variables. And then I also want to look at conditionals. So like if then and then we'll talk about uh, switches or the case uh, command as well. So uh, we're going to learn about testing. And so these are the things we're going to do. First of all, what is a variable in bash? And again, I'm going to say it over and over and over as we go over this Linux plus stuff. If any of this is confusing, I really cover it in so much more depth in my bash scripting playlist, which is going to be linked everywhere all around. So anyway, uh, first of all, let's look at old Sean who and I mean, in fact, old Sean, uh, in fact, it's going to be this guy and, and we're even wearing the same shirt today, which is funny. But even though I don't have green hair and I'm using a different microphone, it's the same me and we're covering uh, the same material. So uh, when it comes to variables in Linux, there are a couple nuances that we need to understand. Uh, other Sean, what do I mean? So if you've been around the channel before, we've done some work with variables, specifically environment variables. So we can set variables on the command line. We can see what's there. If we just type ENV, it'll show us all of our environment variables, which there's a lot of them there. So we won't actually uh, go through what all those mean. Let me clear the screen. And I'm going to set a variable right on the command line. So we can say uh, thing one equals a cool thing. And now if we echo dollar sign thing one, a cool thing, right? When you reference a variable that you've assigned, you put a dollar sign in front of it, but when you actually assign it, you don't use the dollar sign. So like we just did here, thing one equals a cool thing, and it will stay uh, assigned in our environment here, unless we were to close this terminal and log back in, and then it would be gone. Uh, so we can echo it more than once and it'll be there. However, it doesn't work automatically in child processes. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's make a, a quick little uh, sample script. So I'm just going to say um, vi test1.sh, and we'll just do this properly. We'll make it a script with a shebang up there. And now if we were to echo, what did I call it? I called it thing one, I think, thing one. So what this is going to do is it's going to echo the variable thing one, and then and then leave, right? So let's save this. Now, if we do uh, chmod, we did this in the last video. If you didn't catch that, uh, check out the first video where we talk about use or actually doing bash scripts, but uh, let's do that. And now if we do test sh, nothing happens at all. But what if we do echo thing one? Hmm, what, what's the deal? And the deal is that by default, when you assign a variable, it does not get inherited by a child process in the, the shell that you're currently in, in the terminal that you're in. And so because when we run the test one shell script, it actually creates another environment uh, and it doesn't automatically inherit things. But if you do want to have it inherit, what you do is export. And you've probably seen people do this where you type like export and we can just say export the variable, but we could actually assign it and export it at the same time. So we could say export thing one equals look mom, no assignment. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure out what that means, but anyway, do that. And now if we were to execute this script, look at that, because we exported it, that means that anytime we start a new process or a new shell, it's going to inherit from the existing environment that we're in. So if we want to have uh, a variable get inherited by a child, we have to export it. But there is a catch, and that catch is you absolutely cannot 
send it backwards, right? A child process cannot insert a variable into the parent process. There was just, it's, bash doesn't allow that. So you can only do it going from the parent to the child. Okay, so that's how uh, variable stuff works. Let's actually get rid of this uh, script. We don't need this anymore. Uh, get rid of that script and we can do unset thing one. And now if we were to echo thing one, it's gone, right? We unset it so that variable is not set anymore. Hopefully that made sense because understanding how variables work are really, really important to pretty much everything that we're uh, going to cover from loops to conditionals to assigning other things. So uh, that is what a variable is. And now if we're going to be testing variables, uh, there's a couple different ways that we can go about do that, doing that. And an if, then, else, and case are the main conditional things that we're going to cover. And old Sean did a really good job of this. And so I'm going to, again, uh, give the mic back to him. But let's look at the cool script, which is a script I wrote. And this is this introduces something uh, that is very useful for an interactive session with a bash script. Okay, this is a way to bring in data not just like dollar sign one dollar sign two for arguments but like it will query you to enter data as it runs okay it's just it's a really convenient thing especially when you're learning and you want to enter different values without editing the script and it, it works just like this so here we have um echo are you cool or just puts on the screen are you cool and then the read command followed by a variable name and what that'll do is it'll just wait on the command line for you to enter something and press enter and then whatever you put on the, the line there and press enter, that will become uh, the contents of the cool, in this case, the cool variable, okay? And then let's actually walk through this, see if we can see what's gonna happen. So we put something in the cool variable, and then it says if, and then it opens up the double brackets, if cool is equal to, has the contents of yes, then it's going to say, I think you're cool too. And otherwise it's going to say, well, hang out with me and I will make you cool. Okay. So that's uh, what's going on right there. This is a string comparison. Uh, so we are just doing a string comparison. The equal, the double equal sign like is saying has the value of, and that's why we can do that with a string, the word yes. All right. So let's run this and see how it goes. Are you cool? Yes. I think you're cool too. Well, thank you script. But if we do that again, we say no, now the value of cool is gonna be no, so it should say, well, hang out with me and I'll make you cool, but there is a problem, right? The problem is, what if I didn't know exactly how to respond? So we'll run it again, are you cool? Yes, well, hang out with me and I'll make you cool. See, it only looks for the exact word, capital Y, lowercase e, lowercase s, and that's kind of a problem because people might respond in different ways. They might just say Y, for example, or capital Y or lowercase y. So there's lots of options and we want to be able to check for those and this is a part of the this is the part of the video where i let you know that the world of bash scripting can be frustrating because there's like a hundred ways to do everything and there's not one that is right or one that is wrong there's just lots of different ways to accomplish the same task so i'll give you a, a few and you can either use those or come up with your own because again there's just so many ways that we could test for multiple things like that so let's edit this script again vi yeah, cool and one of the things that we could do is add multiple tests. And we can do that by saying, so what if cool is equal to yes? And then if we do double pipe symbol, that's the one like above your enter key on a US keyboard, um, shift and above the enter key, it's just the pipe symbol, right? It's a really tall line. Uh, that means or in this, in this context, that means if cool is equal to yes, or cool is equal to yes, Let's add a couple more. Or uh, cool is equal to just a Y. And we'll do one more. Uh, or cool is equal to just a lowercase y. Let's say they just did that. All right. So with all of those options in there, any one of those should make it evaluate as true. And what we've done is we've just put those different tests inside the double brackets and we've put an or between them so this or this or this or this and if either one if any of those are true then it will evaluate as true so let's test it all right cool Oop. <laughs> i gotta actually type it out cool are you cool 
Yes, all caps. I think you're cool too. Awesome. Uh, cool. Yes, traditionally. I think you're cool too. Awesome. Cool. Uh, are you cool? Affirmative. Uh, well, crap. It doesn't. It doesn't test for everything, right? It's not perfect, but we've been able to test for other um, potential replies. Now we could just add to the echo, like, "Are you cool?" and then give options to them, like Y or N, uh, that kind of a thing, and then kind of like show them how to go about doing it in, in the instructions. Uh, but you know, this is how we can also test for multiple things. Now, there's another way that we could test for multiple options. Let me show you. Let's go back into cool again. So here, let's get rid of all this stuff inside the test. Now, this is where we can only do this inside of double brackets because this is one of the extended things that bash will allow you to do inside double brackets this is not backwards compatible with like an old shell or anything like that this only works in bash because it requires the double brackets but what we could do is say if cool is equal to and then do the at symbol let me find my keyboard at and then open parentheses and then put a bunch of options like yes or yes or y or it's lowercase y and we'll even add affirmative if any of those uh is in there and what it's going to do is this is using regular expressions basically and it's saying if it matches any of those then it will uh, count as true and so let's run this one cool are you cool yes i think you're cool too are you cool? No. Well, hang out with me. I think you're cool. So it will test for all of those things. I guess I shouldn't have done just the first one, right? Are you cool? Just why? I think you're cool too. So it, it looked and it matched one of those. So it evaluated as true. Okay. So that's another way. And of course, there's yet another way. Actually, there's several more ways and I'm not covering all the possible ways we could do this, but let's go back into there. And one more time, uh, let's say we wanted to test for um, things, but rather than just do an if statement, actually here, I'm kind of getting tired of this still. So. Uh, rather than using just an if statement with like multiple conditional things, we could use a construct called elif, which is kind of like else if. And what that allows us to do is have multiple tests. And let me show you, I, I have a file here. So vi elif, okay? And I've already typed this all out. So basically what happens here is the same thing. It started the same way. Are you cool? And then it reads that variable in. And then it says if uh cool is equal to yes then it'll say i think you're cool too right and or i don't want to say and because that's actually a, a word in here so after that <laughs> uh it says else if or just elif is actually the the syntax that we use but elif cool is equal to capital y then i want you to say cool people usually use the whole word but whatevs and if neither one of those is true, then, well, hang out with me and I'll make you cool. So what this will do is it will test for two different things. But the unique thing about using LF is the results are different for each object that you have in there, right? So if it's YES, it will evaluate and say, I think you're cool too. But if it's just a capital Y, it will just say cool people usually use the whole word and anything else that'll say, well, hang out with me and you'll be cool. So let's try it, but hopefully that's clear what's actually going on. The difference between this and making a whole bunch of uh, tests in the same if statement is that with LF, you can give it a different result if it has, you know, based on different inputs or different things that you're testing for. All right, so let's get out of here. We'll run LF. Are you cool? I'm gonna start with just yes. I think you're cool too, all right? LF, I'm gonna say capital Y, yeah cool people usually use the whole word but whatevs and see it gave us that alternate uh, reaction and then anything else that we type are you cool blah 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 well hang out with me and i'll make you cool and that's just uh, another way that we can uh, do multiple tests but again this one gives you the option uh, to have different results for the different tests that you're doing and then lastly i do want to show you how you would go like if you have a bunch and you want to test for like a whole bunch of different options the LF statements can get messy and long and cumbersome, right? Well, there's another way to go about doing that. And it's it's probably a better and neater way to do it. And it's using the case statement. This is not if, this is completely separate from if, but it's a different type of conditional. So let's look, I have a program or a script here all written out. 
uh, let's look at the case program. We're going to start the exact same way, okay? It's going to read in the variable cool, and it's going to say, you know, are you cool? But here's where it varies and gets a little bit different. See where it says, instead of if, it says case, and then the variable that we're testing, and then the word in. So case cool in, and then we have the different results that we're looking for, or the different uh, possibilities or potentials that we're looking for. And it's basically the thing we're testing for, and then uh, parenthesis, like close parenthesis, and then all the lines after here are gonna be executed. So this actually has two in here. If you answer yes, all in caps, it'll say, nice, stop yelling. And I think my ears are bleeding. If you say yes, the normal way with a capitalized Y, then it'll say, uh, nice, me too. And uh, Y, Y, and then the last one is the asterisk. And that's basically a catch-all. It's like, okay, if anything else, is in this cool variable like it doesn't match anything else it's like the catch-all at the end then say that's okay hang out with me and you'll get cool okay so hopefully that makes sense the other thing i want to point out that you may have missed because i didn't point it out yet um see how we can have multiple lines here that's not a problem however the way we denote that we're finished with this section if you will is by putting a double semicolon at the end of the final statement so like this one only has a single echo statement and you put double semicolons at the end there so it's really important that that's how you end each segment otherwise the program doesn't know that that segment is over okay and same thing down here it ends with the double semicolons and then you remember how if started with if and then you had the then and the else and then at the very end it was fi and that's how it ended so that bash would know that you're done with that statement Case is exactly the same, but it just looks ridiculous because it's a it's like a longer word. So it starts with case, and then when you're done, ESAC, which is case backwards. See how that I mean, if you didn't if you weren't looking for it to be backwards, that's a weird word to have in the middle of your script, but ESAC is how you end a case statement. Okay. So hopefully this looks good. Let's try out a couple of these because it will function the same way as an if statement with um elif in there as well. Uh, let's see. So case, are you cool? Yes. All in caps. Nice. Stop yelling. I think my ears are bleeding. Remember we, that was in there. That's what we would expect. Let's run case. And now we're just going to say uh, capital or lowercase Y. Uh, if cool means the minimum possible effort, maybe because I, I guess I was being silly. I didn't pay attention, but um, a lowercase Y is the <laughs> least amount of effort and very cool. And if we do anything that wasn't listed in there, that asterisk is going to catch it. And the catch all is what's going to be put. Sorry, not as an argument. We've got to wait for it to prompt us. Are you cool? No. That's okay. Hang on with me and you'll get cool. Okay, so it's the same end result. It's just done in multiple different ways. And a case statement is much more easier to read uh, if you have a whole bunch of them down a row instead of a lot of elif, 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 elif kind of things uh, going down the page. But you have to remember it's case and ESAC at the bottom. Uh, and I mean, it makes sense now, but otherwise ESAC, like I said, is a weird word to just have in the middle of a script. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna cover loops and how loops work, still using different variables and iterations and things like that. But if what we just covered doesn't quite make sense, be sure to check out the Bash scripting playlist, which this is the 87th time I've mentioned it, I'm sure. Uh, but that will give you a far deeper understanding. Uh, I'm just trying to cover the things mentioned specifically in the Linux Plus objectives. So for now, uh, learn everything, do what you love, and most importantly, be kind. Thanks for tuning in. It's good to see everybody again. And hopefully the next video will not take months to come out because boy, that sucked. I'll see you next time.